Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's been a few days since I've posted anything or done anything. And there's a reason why, guys. I've been so busy with things outside. We've had bad news in our family. We had a death in, in the family, and my wife took it kind of hard. So that's one of the reasons why I've been offline. And I want to talk to you guys um, from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 2, or verses 3 through 8. And it's about departure of faith, guys, and I want to discuss this with you because I think it's necessary that we speak on this fact alone today. And I'm going to show you some of the websites out there, or I'm going to show you a website as well to go with this, that's going to show you what young millennial children are hearing about churches and what their opinion of churches is and what the general public consensus of Christians are. And with that said, guys, um, I want you to look here at uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 through 8. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. You see, we have so many false teachers. And I'm not going to do another Beware of False Prophets, because this ties into that. But this is an extension of the False Prophet series that we're doing. And I want you to see here, uh, and this is theblazetv.com. Uh, this is one of their stories. Uh, and it says here, why young people are leaving churches and Christianity behind. First and foremost is the idea that some millennials have that religious people are hypocritical, judgmental, or insincere. This FOF argues might hamper, <laughs> this might uh, hamper interest in participating in both church and Christianity as a whole. Considering interviews and researches conducted by Tom and Jody Schultz in their new book, Why Nobody Wants to Go to Church Anymore, these possible elements have been frequently cited. I don't support them. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> but it's what they said here that actually was really impactful. Politics at the pulpit. Isolationism. Okay. Oh, sex. Sex. Okay, a list compiled by Christianity Today's Leadership Journal notes that sex is also an issue that might turn young people from the church. Openness is yet another perceived young adults view the church as closed off and too exclusive. Okay, and this has been the problem with it, and this is exactly why people are turning away from these churches. Okay, okay, they're not friendly enough. They're too strict. These are the excuses that were generated by Satan. To block Christians from ministry and to block young people from coming to God. And it, it's been sick. It's disgusting. And I'll be the first to tell you that. And a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to fall into false teachings. <clears throat> yep, that's one about history. I didn't want that one. <clears throat> I didn't want that one either. I got too many of these ones here. I was looking for one that actually is about a different subject that we're going to talk about later. That's Luke 16, 1, if you're prepared. Um, I want you guys to read the whole chapter or the whole story of the unjust steward. Excuse me. Okay. I need you guys to read uh, Luke 16, 1 through 13. Because that's going to be our next study. But I just, I, I didn't mean to bring it up. But I want to get back on this departure of faith. Okay. We have in this day and age, thousands of young men and women that are lost to the world. Because they have ran from the truth. They, they feel that Christians are closed off, self-righteous hypocrites. Okay. They view Christianity, and it's it's by NLP, and it's by the societal programming. It's by peer pressure. There's all these factors that play into it, but yet not one person takes a stand and say, no, 
enough. I want to serve God. I want to serve him wholeheartedly. Put away the shopping cart and serve God wholly. Not picking and choosing what you want to learn from. Okay, the Bible says clearly that right here, and this is the explanation of why children are leaving it. It's right here. They are deceived by the Antichrist. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness, excuse me, of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is their curse, and this is what the reward is. Okay? But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification and of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherein he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which had loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay? But I want to get right back on that subject. There is going to be a departure of faith. And it's because of these false prophets, these false teachers in these buildings they call churches today. If you want to see a true minister of God, go out and observe people. You'll see people giving to other people. You'll see people helping other people. That's a true minister of God. Not what you see in these pulpits nowadays. Not what's standing there beating on his stand and telling you to give him money. That's not, that's not of God. And that's why we, don't, we have people so hard-pressed against Christ now. Besides the NLP and the societal deprogramming. And the societal programming of what feels good we must do. These are the man of sin that's revealed. This is the son of perdition. This is Satan's invention to turn the youth away from Christ, the young adult away from Christ, and turn them to fables. And it's very simply done. It's very subtle, but it's simple. It's a blunt force attack. Satan has one type of attack, and it's a direct attack. He might use subtlety. He might use other lures from you, your time, your effort, your work. But the fact is that he uses a linear attack. He's one-sided on his attacks because he can't be everywhere. He has to walk everywhere. God sees everything. But Satan has to go to and fro. So he uses his little minions, to agents, to whisper in your ear these lies and to get you convinced that you're, you're not, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to be in church, which is fellowshipping with another. Church is not a building. It's you and one other person. Because he says, where two or more are gathered, there am I in the midst. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Pardon my tongue tightness there tonight. But this is why we must be in church always. Stand strong. Get with Christian brothers and sisters. Stand strong. Learn from the word. Study the word together. You will find those prayer partners and just stand with them. And focus on the word. And don't pick and choose what you want to hear. Take the whole scripture 100% and apply it to your life. The Old Testament is just as uh, as important as the New Testament is today. Okay? Not one piece of this scripture should ever be taken without accepting that it's one piece of the whole biblical work. This scripture today is just focusing on the falling away or the departure because it's subtle. Departing from the faith is just as easy as waking up and not praying every day. Because with that little bit of failure is the reason you start to fall from God and fall from grace. It's not effectually seeking his will every day in your life. With that said, guys, God bless you. I said I'd try to keep it as short as I could. This is about as short as I can keep it. May the Lord bless you and keep you always safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace, guys.